Warning, the following podcast contains violent scenes that may be unsettling to some listeners. Listener discretion is advised. In the year 1848, the Industrial Revolution is just starting to impact the world. Among these new fantastic innovations came the rise of snake oil salesmen promising to cure everything from cholera to baldness. For the immortals of the night, this means nothing until one such tonic begins poisoning them. Now antidotes and alliances are being sought out. One such alliance consists of Lord William Pelham, an asthmoid played by Adam, Augustus Rogers, a gangrel played by Andrew, Herschel Buckman, a Tremere played by Chris, Amir, a Setite played by Slavic, and Joaquin is the storyteller. Diluted is a vampire in the masquerade story that takes place in the Victorian age vampire setting. If you wish to contact us, you can reach us on Twitter at twin underscore cities underscore VTM or on Facebook at Twin Cities by Night. We hope you enjoy. Do you gentlemen think we should split or should we stay together? Why don't we take a cab? I can pop in at a couple restaurants and taverns. Maybe a gentleman's club or two to see if I can find my solicitor to set him about investigating these properties and names. Afterwards, we can head back to the docks. Or to Elysium, but yes, definitely it would be a good first step then. Yeah. Uh, Okay, then. uh, We should probably head to Elysium then after we look in on my solicitor. Okay. So, Solicitor Elysium. Yeah, uh, Solicitor Elysium and then the docks. And. Who knows? We may change our uh, our trajectory once we find out the what this all this babbling is that is written down there. So, all right, yes, indeed. Then I, I I would find it very interesting to see how someone of your stature uh, goes about this mighty town of ours. <laughs> First, we'll hail a cab. <laughs> Pelham will get up and he'll uh, put his overcoat on, gather his things. And then he'll go out to the street to hail a cab. I'll put on my top hat, my my overcoat, and my cane as I follow along. All right. So you're gonna make your way, sort of like make several stops on the way to Elysium. Yes, he'll first stop off at the gentleman's club that his solicitor frequents to see if he's there. And if he's not there, he'll stop at one or two restaurants along the way to see if he's there. Otherwise, he will send a message to his office. Okay, so for the morning, trying to figure out how I should do that. Do I roll over that, or um, you just fiat it. I don't mind either way. Yeah. Okay. So I say, you find him at the second club you look at. Okay, so he'll be at the at a restaurant then. Yeah, the restaurant. Yeah. Okay. I will. Uh, when we get there, I'll turn to the other two. Excuse me, gentlemen. I'll see if he's in here, and I'll turn to the driver. Please wait for me. And then I'll head into the restaurant. I will slip the meter D one pound, ask him, is this gentleman having dinner this evening? Uh, yeah, yes, sir. He is, yes. Excellent, thank you. Can you please uh, guide me to his table? Uh, certainly, I'll please wait, sir. Thank you. <clears throat> and Pelham will, you know, is, uh, the, is his solicitor slash attorney dining alone? Does he have someone there with him? Uh, this, I thought this person, he's alone. Am I inside the, this restaurant with him, or are we waiting outside? No, waiting outside in the cold. Damn it. I was about to try and hide. We don't care about cold. I know, but I was about to try and hide the senses and try to listen, but if I'm outside, okay, never mind. Okay. Uh, to cut it short, Pelham will hand the solicitor the notes that he took. He'll ask him to investigate um, the properties and the people involved, hire any additional assistance that you may need, forward all expenses to me, and I'll see that it's taken care of. Enjoy your meal. Your meal is on me. Have a good evening. Thank you for generosity, sir. We'll get. I'll get on this right away. Thank you. Yes. After about 10, 15 minutes, Pelham will walk out of the restaurant, hop back into the cab, and you know he'll wrap the roof with the top of his walking stick. Driver, proceed. Does your uh, does your retainer there? Have a quick turnaround usually for such deeds. He takes as long as he needs to take. I prefer a thorough and accurate job to a quick one. Yes, yes, that's understandable. Definitely. 
you have to understand my naivety when it comes to financial matters and stuff like that. I've spent so many years fine tuning my occult skills, my magical abilities, that unfortunately, I am just a newborn when it comes to to such matters. But I appreciate your help and your hospitality in this. I just smile, my fake smile. If you would like an education on managing finances, I'm sure that we can work something out. I find that one of the key things to keep in mind is that the better you treat your people, the better it works out for you in the end. Yeah, that very well may be the case. I just look out the window. <laughs> uh. So you enter into Elysium and... To your mild surprise, there's only two people and it's currently in attendance. One of them you see is Ebert Brainbridge. Another Brain one surprise. Another one is a uh, you notice you know he's a sort of like a messenger for like uh, for the higher ups in the community. Basically he, as soon as you enter it he basically turns to you and says like sorry sirs, but uh, the uh, upper echelons of our uh, community have uh, matters to attend to of uh, uh, quite urgent matters or requiring the masquerade and uh, steps to uh, keep it. Some measures have to be taken that unfortunately require many, many moving parts. I, I understand, good sir, but I just need a moment of Mr. Brainbridge, a clan made of mine's time, if you so would just kindly inform him. He's like, go right ahead. You, you just, you just, he's not just, he says back down, he's just there to let anyone who's come to Elysium know that, yeah, the higher ups are not really going to be available tonight. Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha. I'm going to ask him a couple of questions while he goes up and talks to Bainbridge. Yes, sir. Uh, I just wanted to know uh, are they meeting here somewhere, or is it a different place entirely? They, there are, there's, there's a more uh, private location for, for, uh, members such as they i'm afraid i, I cannot just i'm afraid i can't just uh, disclose it even to even to our even to amongst ourselves it's i'm afraid it's more private i understand and there's well nothing that you can inform us of with it may be he's, you see him it's sort of like uh this is like, a concerning time for our kind yes all of us i can see like there's been some disturbing reports from our uh, fellows in Dublin. They seem to have any troubles of their own, and unfortunately it seems that they are just, they are looking for a, uh, looking for looking for answers here. I see. Thank you so kindly for what you could tell me. I know that uh, the wrong words can, well, you know. Yes, especially in times such as this. Uh, yeah. So, uh, I'm gonna head towards Brainbridge while those two are talking or standing there, kind of have a tremere one-on-one moment. You see, if he's like, he's got several books, stacks of books all around him. You see him like looking over, like, that's looking at reading them, like taking notes. I kind of like quietly just clear my throat to get his attention. Pelham will uh, examine some of the artwork, and he'll pop up heightened senses to listen in. I pull a seat up and I and I sit next to him and I'm like, "Brother, we've been making progress in our investigation. You'd be no. amazed at their awe at my my skills in the arts. How it's helped this investigation progress." Indeed, yes. Uh, I'm, we... I'm I'm researching a possible. I'm trying to find a cure. What do you want? We found some information from someone that has written in a language that none of us speak and I was hoping that maybe you could help us. Well, what language is it? Mesopotamian? Egyptian? I don't... <laughs> no, I would recognize those. Of course I wouldn't. Uh, <laughs> uh, I pull out the, the... Here's a taste of it. I pull out the charcoal thing and I unroll it on the table around him. It's like... Uh, Gaelic. <sighs> of course it would be that. Where did you find this? At the house of t- uh, two brothers... The Conway brothers, they own a shipping company. Matter of fact, we believe they may have been responsible for the staking and death of Solomon and very well behind this Truly. matter which you're trying to find a cure for. Hmm. Holt, sir, matter of been... fact, one of the huh, so one of the j- journals that I one of the journals that I gave Mr. Uh, Clark 
Uh, it was written in this language. Mr. Clark, the deputy? That's, well, you mean the, that big, oh, yes, I, yes, I know that, yes. And then I have another journal here, though, that you might find interesting, too, uh, that makes, that's written in the same language, which has me worried because it makes references to Eastern Europe and Romania and those lands. You mean, you think from there, someone from there could be involved with this? I don't know. Why would they travel there? Why would two Irishmen travel to such far eastern lands? Uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah. Now you have my attention. I, 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 uh, I don't know. I I do know someone who can read this, though. Uh, One other remember, matter of concern. You remember our, you remember our, our mutual acquaintance, uh, Mr. Simon Westing, uh, I believe. Yeah. He, he met him he, at the bar. Yes, he he is quite he is fluent in it. He learned it apparently back during his life working in the docks. What clan is he of? Uh, he is uh, quite the temperamental fellow. If you catch my drift. Uh, talking about individual uh, quirks. It seems like a member of my group is of one. <laughs> One group that has a very large grudge to hold upon ours. Mm. And I motion towards like where Pelham's lo- looking at the pretty paintings. <laughs> oh, so you finally figured out that you were dancing with some very uh, unique individuals. Yes. Yes, I have. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, but this, uh, thank you for the information. Uh, yes, I believe. By the way, find Simon. He is at Hyde Park right now. He is with the horse, the uh, Sir Hor- the other man you met last night. They have some business to attend to there. What clan is he of? Uh, you know, you know, he's Toyodor. Toyodor, all right. Horace. All right, thank you. I appreciate it. And uh, I don't know how to put this. If any of my peers have to ask my abilities, of course you will confirm what I've told them, right? Perhaps. Why would I, perhaps? You know, to strengthen. We're only as strong as our weakest link. Yes. You are correct in that. I feel like this is a really good time for uh, Augie to walk up. All right. You do so. <laughs> that is like, oh, hello. Uh, yes. Edward. Oh, yes. Mr. Rogers. Yes. My, uh, yes. Uh, I extend my hand. He, he, he takes your hand. Yes, 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 yes. I was, as I told you, I was, I was conducting some research there. These, this library is a cornucopia of information. Yes, you know, I've given a lot of thought to the uh, proposition that you made to me, and I've decided that I will definitely invest in your efforts. Oh, marvelous! Yes, 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 yes. I, yes, uh, uh, I, I have a small. Uh, Lab. Proposition. Sure, sure. I look over at him and just say, "Yes, Edward here believes he may be onto a cure." So, I feel like an investment is the right way to go. Isn't that right, Edward? Yes, 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 yes. I, I I've been try. I've been making the all. The, uh, for afraid our uh, peer, our uh, our uh, <coughs> elders are too preoccupied with the ancient techniques. I feel and that. Other concerns, yes, I understand. However, progress can only be made by those who are willing to invest the time into it. Isn't that correct? Yes, yes. And you are definitely willing to do so. So, how about this? Send me a bill for whatever it is you need to accomplish, uh, itemized as detailed as possible, and uh, we'll get you taken care of. Oh yes, yes, yes. Thank yes. you. Yes, it shouldn't be too. It shouldn't be too extravagant. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, yes, uh, you still have my information, isn't that correct? Yes, I believe I did. I do. Uh, yes, I, I'll, I will send you send send a man to your state uh, with the information. Good. I look forward to working with you, and I'll uh, hold my hand out to shake his hand. He shakes it, and I look pointedly at uh, uh, Herschel and says, are, "Are you done?" Yeah, and I look at Brainbridge quizzing. Yeah, look at him somewhat surprised, just, and I just smugly like. <laughs> I know something you don't. <laughs> and I get up and I'm like, I seem to we, I seem to have a name of an individual that can help us read this language, which is Gaelic, by the way. Uh, he was a uh, he was 
someone that we all met at the bar, Simon Westing. He's over at Hyde Park now. So I suggest uh, we should make a detour from there, uh, probably with the quickest haste, to see what we can find out this stuff says. I see. Well, let's get on that. And uh, Edward here will uh, do his part, I'm sure. Yes, certainly. I oh, shall I'm sure he will. Continue my research. Hmm. Internally, I'm like, what the fuck is this guy up to, man? <laughs> hmm. Wheels within wheels within wheels, I see. Uh, I don't say that out loud. Uh, then I suppose we should go scoop up Lord Pelham over there. He seems to be very drawn into the painting over there as I make my way towards the Asimite. So I'll walk up and Lord Pelham. When Pelham hears the footsteps, he'll turn off heightened senses. Uh, Lord Pelham, I seem to have uh, a name of an individual uh, who can help us uh, interpret this writing, which turns out to be Gaelic. Oh, interesting. Uh, who might this yes. individual be? Uh, he's actually a gentleman that we met the other night. His name is uh, Simon Westing. He's a uh, uh, of Clan Bruja. He's over currently at Hyde Park right now, uh, working with uh, someone named Horace, who was with him the other night. Are you suggesting a detour then? Indeed, I am. Very well. Let us be off. All right. So yeah, you guys head back to your coach. It's a short, short enough trip to Hyde Park. It's I think it's. I think it's nearby to the museum that uh, that the they use as Elysium. So you make your way there, and it's a. Uh, so you notice that like uh, there are several uh, men actually near the entrances, of that park. That I think is, you uh, gentlemen like, should do the talking in these situations. You seem to be better negotiators than I. Well, we'll hop out of the cab. We'll walk over to the nearest entrance. Good evening, gentlemen. Ah, huh? what are you doing? Taking in the evening air. Very well. They just like just, just say to stand by at the entrance. I I, I I I tip my hat uh, to them. Uh, I'm looking for a gentleman named Simon. Do you perhaps know who I'm talking about? What's your business? Uh, a mutual friend of ours sent me his way. He knows who I am and who my companions are. Hmm. I'm still uh, mounted, by the way, just uh, silently standing over on my horse, just looking, not really saying anything. Hmm. You just can your business wait. Uh, they're a bit busy right now with a private engagement at the park. This, sir, is of utmost importance, and I really think that you should perhaps go tell him right now what we're doing, that we're here waiting for him. And I'm going to use dominate too, while uh, while doing that, if I can, see if it works. All right. All right. What's the difficulty, storyteller? Six. Uh, one, two, three successes. All right. With three successes, you basically, what'd you say to him? Like, you should go tell him that there's someone here who needs to speak is it, to him. You, okay, it, all right, I definitely. On something of, of utmost importance. That's what I said. You know, like, uh, definitely. Go. He goes, he turns back, he turns right around. He walks off. <laughs> and I turn around, I look at my companions. Huh, I must have convinced him. Must have been something I said. I turn around and I wait. I just, question the eyebrow. Pelham will look at you. We know this gentleman. Mm-hmm. What was to prevent us from walking into the park and finding him ourselves? Because his employee there was saying that they're too busy talking about something else of utmost importance. What we have, I feel, I get a little terse, is way more important than what they're talking about. All right, so if, quickly quickly enough, the guy comes back saying, like, all right, boss man says it's okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. But, and I, as I walk, as I, I'll progress to follow Lord Pelham because he's obviously a uh, uh, a warrior, and, I, and I'll, I'll walk between him and the horse so I can be, get most protection. Yeah. Pelham will walk in. He'll stroll casually, heading in the direction that the uh, gentleman just came from. All right. You approach and you see Simon Westing. You remember him? He's got a. He's dressed in a dark overcoat, and his top hat is like, he was, like poor clothing, but he's got some fierce like mutton chops going on in his face. And you seem like he's leaning against like a tree, watching uh, what looks like, next to like a uh, small, uh, like a almost like a uh, what do you call it, like a gazebo like type thing. But you see, uh, uh, where you see another man standing, looking out at a scene where the two you see two groups of men st- facing each other. I uh, I approach still mounted until like I get up to where they're discussing things and then I'll dismount and uh, slowly approach, letting the other two step in front of me. 
are giving time to approach first as I dismount. Pelham will approach them directly. I'll follow Pelham and and whisper in his ear, please negotiate with them. Let's find out what they know about what we're looking into before we tell them anything, before we have them interpret what we have. Does that make sense? Pelham will turn. Why don't you go ahead and take the lead on this one then? Okay, I I, I, I I suppose I could do that. Not like not feeling so much of a godhead anymore. Uh, I, I'll kind of like take the lead in this, Mister Westing. Yes. Yeah, so what is it, you guys? Oh, you you're that group from the other night. Where's it you want? Yes, yeah, so I was just uh, me and my companions here. You know, we're making progress in our investigation, and I and I thought that maybe uh, you know, I I, I have something that might interest you. Of course, you know, we could talk about sharing such information uh, if you have something that you think of may be of value to us, seeing that you're also searching for the same answers as we are. I have to wait a bit. Uh, I have to, I'm afraid I have to wait for uh, Mr. Holden's permission. He is officiating a duel right now, so we have to wait a bit. A duel? A yes. duel between who? And so he uh, was to say that yeah, there are two two men over there. You you look and you see like there are two like a uh, mid late like a uh, two uh, young looking men standing standing in the snow, but like sort of like they're talking to like in two groups, like uh, one on the left, one on the right, like about like two men and then like two men flanking them. And you see they're both sort of like look talking amongst their group. And you Mess Westing explains that like, yes, apparently uh, they're. Uh, students from the architectural school and that what the one on the left was a uh, quite the pioneer and developed some sort of new technique or some nonsense and so as usual his friend and partner decided to take all the glory and all the money with it and so as a as a result the first one over here decides to challenge him to a duel now you know, they outlawed dueling in 44, but you can obviously see it doesn't stop them idiots from killing themselves. What's their names? I didn't really pay attention. I don't really care. It's just Horace is a really, it's really a horse's thing. He likes to officiate these things. Absolutely fascinating. I will. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I take it no one looks familiar over there, right? Other than Horace. Yeah. You, you see him just like sort of standing in this gazebo thing, just like looking at it, like painted. Like he's just like you know, we're raptured by. He hasn't even looked around, turned around, and looked at you guys yet. Wow, this is intense, dude. This I can I can get behind this. <laughs> I'm gonna go be witness. I want to see what happens. Westing West like leans in and says, "I got money on the second guy." Look at the you. You got money. You want to keep it? You're you're gonna practice your aim. He's got it. You willing to bet on this? Who me? Any of you, you just, you just like leans into your oh. group. Oh, I'll, I'll bet five pounds, yeah. on the first gentlemen. I'm gonna take a look at the two of them and evaluate them. Uh, what kind of duel are they doing? They're doing pistols. Pistols. Okay. Can I do kind of get a feel for each one of them using like uh, uh, perception and maybe like uh, I don't know empathy to try and. Uh, get a view of like their body language, how confident they seem, and and their maybe their overall physical like uh, uh, health and all that kind of stuff. Maybe one of them is like quick on the draw. I don't know. All um, right, so <laughs> you see the, the two men, one on the left, one on the right. The one on the left, you know, is the uh, is the, is the one who uh, developed the the architecture, but didn't get didn't get the money. He look okay. So w- w- give me a roll. Get example difficulty seven. It's it's a bit of a distance. Two successes. All right, with two successes, you definitely tell like he definitely he's definitely like sort of like you know you know jittering around, moving just like moving his arms around and the and the keep you nervousness. Know, really, yeah, or you don't know, he just moving his arms around, you know, trying to keep to keep motion, you know, especially his hands, moving his hands around, you know. Just. Okay, and the other guy. And uh, the other one, you notice is a lot more. Uh, is a lot more calmer though. He he's definitely you see him like you see him make similar motions, but just like much slower, much more. Uh, the one who's got the money, he's uh, you know he's still he's doing similar things, trying to keep, you know, keep his hands warm and fresh, but it's not more controlled. Hmm. And who did you uh, who did uh, Hershel say he was betting on? He said he was betting on the second one. 
the one on the right, the one who stole the money. That's who Simon said he was betting on, right? Yes. All right. Yeah, I was going to bet. I was going to say I was going to bet on the first one. That's what my guy said. I'll just have for fun, like five pounds, you know what I mean? All right. Any other two joining in? No, thank you. <laughs> I tend not to gamble. How about you, Mr. Rogers? Well, usually I only bet on animals, but uh, I think I'll make an exception for this particular circumstance. It's very unique. And then I'll uh, I'll place a bet that uh, the 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 guy who's on the right will uh, win. Um, I don't know what wagers are he accepting. Uh, whatever you want. I, I'll wager just a couple of pounds, like three pounds or something. All right, so five on the challenger, three on the defender, and I'm betting on the defender as well. So that's eight pounds for the defender, five pounds for the challenger. Woo, let's go. <laughs> All right, now let me roll the dice. Evens, Here. it's the uh, challenger. Odds, it's the defender. 50-50. Yes. <laughs> I'm not stressed about it. I can throw away three pounds. And that's a six. So that's the challenger, I believe I said. All right. So that means I want. So what exactly right? happens? So right. as you you basically like you see the men, you know, have, have the pistols stand back to back, pace forward, turn and shoot. With a six, the challenger, the one who lost the money, you see him whirl around. He's Presses the trigger, you hear the you hear the boom of the gunshot, and you see, you know, the the defender's stomach just sort of like rip up, like just sort of like pop open, and you just see him sort of like just falls to the ground. It's like, oh, 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 oh. Uh, you just you just hear the like this groaning sound out of him, like it's like well, crumple completely. Not being one to uh, take a loss as a total loss. I'm going to go over to the guy laying on the ground, dying, and offer him a point of blood. What? If I can heal him. Like, I'm going to, like, like see if I can heal him. Cut my arm open and just heal him. Now, th- this could just heal him up and, like, make him into a ghoul, right? Just one point? Uh, In front of, like, a whole park of people, dude. A whole, it's not a whole park. He didn't describe- no, he said it was, like, closed up. There's, like, just a couple of vampires and these two guys, right? Yeah, it was like it was like these two guys and like like uh, two guys behind them. Like as soon as the gunshot went off, obviously like. Uh, oh, know, I they, thought that was crowd like a crowd of people. No, no, no. Oh no! If there's a crowd, I would not be doing this at all. No. no it's, okay, it's, I was just, just, just saying. I was it's, like, damn, it's, it's just it's just like you know like six six humans as far as you know and uh, you guys. Oh, okay, no, I got you, got it's you. not humans. Come on. Okay, yeah. There's uh, at least a couple. <laughs> yeah, I'm you know, I'm thinking they're not human at all. Well, you know that's wrong. Too. Well, the, you know that the one who got shot it definitely is. <laughs> uh, so yeah, he was uh, right when you hear the gun, you know that. Uh, but he's like on the ground, like oh, and I'm gonna go over to him, like I'm like I'm like oh, it's gonna be okay. You're gonna be all right. Uh, but wait, but wait, hey, wait, before you do that, uh, let me see what my notes say. Give me a. Uh, so yeah, you know, if you, as that if you hear the gunshot, you notice that uh, Westing turns away right, right as he hears it, and then it's like self control rolls, everyone, dude. Exactly, you just saw a guy get gunshot. Let's see some rolls. Nice. That's we, All yeah, right. why Westing turned away. He's like, nah, yep, don't want, don't need to see this. Don't need to make an incident. Okay. <laughs> oh, you want self control? Yes. All right. Um. Okay. Who, who was all watching? Were all three of you watching? Yeah, yeah, I was watching. You're a bit of a distance away, so you don't immediately notice. Uh, what would the difficulty be? Is this for blood? It, yeah, basically he got, he got gut shot, which means like there's a lot of blood going out. I, I, I'm at full blood, so what would I be? Yeah, doing? you you would, you would I say you, yours is really reduced by one, but the other two they got okay. the po- they got the poison in them too, so that's an increased yeah. frenzy. Yeah, yeah, because I got I got a bunch of that shit in me, dude. I had a four on that roll, so I don't remember what uh, how much that increased it by. You, I think, uh, say, say, you increases yours by one and uh, Herschel's by two. Okay. What's so the let's difficulty? Say space difficulty six. So for you, Pelham, that's minus one, so that's five. For you, uh, Rogers, that's plus one, so that's seven. And you, Herschel, that'd be eight. 
Well, I had three can successes. I... Oh, yeah, can so I... you're good. Cast oh, two power. successes. Yes, you can. Now give me a roll. Okay, I'm going <laughs> to... All right, hold on a second. <laughs> I'm spending my willpower. Hold on. Uh, okay, here we go. So yeah, two successes from uh, Pelham. That you're good. Uh, well, I would have had one anyways, but two successes for me altogether. Oh yeah, so yeah, but all of you make it, and you just sort of yeah. You, know, you notice that you do notice that you know Herschel and uh, Rogers just sort of like, this, there's a moment like oh, then he like magic pull themselves back. Um. Right, so I'm going to go over to the guy who's like on the ground. He's probably not dead yet. He's probably severely injured. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna wait a second because, like, most likely at the end of like the duel, uh, you know, he'll be declared winner, and then they'll kind of like, ah, all right, fine, fuck you, and like leave or whatever, do his exactly, thing. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. And now. After, yeah. yeah. Now just it's uh, as they do all that, and so basically, yeah, the, the three the victors are leaving behind, and then there's just uh. There's just the loser and his two guys behind him. Yeah, with like a kind of smile on my face, I'll crouch over down over him and say, give him this, uh, you have one chance. If you wish to live, I can save you. (laughs) What? (laughs) Don't know what he said. What what, what is it? What what is it? What is it? Do you you wish to be saved? Yes. Yes, I do. I will bite into my wrist with my fangs and then, like, force feed him a point of blood. He's like, at first, he's like, oh, and then he starts drinking. I have no idea how to do this, so, um. I mean, he gets a point of vitae, right? Uh, yeah, I guess. And then he can use that to heal, like, a lethal point, and that might be enough to save him. Oh, so, yeah, if he lives. He might come you. find me. All right. You're going to put one of your business cards on his chest? Come find me later, man. Yes, exactly. Exactly. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to be like, here's my card. Come find me if uh, you're interested. Tomorrow night's newspaper. Gentleman bursts into flames on bridge. Because <laughs> here's the thing. It's only gonna, he's only going to be able to heal like one point, right? It's lethal. So at most, he's, he's probably going to be... Uh, hospitalized for like a day or two you know to heal yeah. off what he has and maybe even longer and so all right so yeah you, gonna... you, you do that then the, then the other two are just sort of like the, the other two men behind him look to like horse and they just like nods and they're like okay then, then they drag, they'll pick him up to sort of lead him out lead him away everyone wants a ghoul <laughs> then there's your horse going like well, didn't expect that to happen. Yeah, he should promise. He fucked over his friend and uh, for monetary gain. Uh, good businessman. <laughs> oh, that is well done, sir. Well, well done. Now, what, may I ask, brought you all here tonight? Yeah, I'm not sure if I could top that, but I was. I'm gonna turn. Actually... Try... Look at the other two. That's all I'm going to do. I was actually wishing to have a word with Mr. Simon over here, but he said he was, at the moment, uh, t- uh, had some responsibility to you. But now that that seems to be over with, I was wondering if I could have a moment of his time. Well, um, perhaps if you tell me first what you want him for. You see, good help is very hard to come by. Well, you see, actually, I was going to kind of extend an offer to you and your group. The other evening we met up, Brainbridge was with you at that establishment, and you said that your group was trying to also find answers to this toxin that seems to be going around the city. And we have some information that we think might be helpful to you guys, and we're looking maybe to make a deal to exchange uh, with some information that you may have found out. Huh. Interesting. Interesting. So you propose a mutually beneficial agreement, then? Of course, for the overall good of the Camarilla and our wonderful organization within the city here. We both get from this deal, and we both serve the greater good. Yes, yes. So, very well. Let, let's hear what you want first. Then I can see, I, then I shall say, really, just what I need in return for that. Sir... So you're asking me to show my cards before you even tell me you're willing to play? There is an order to the game, you know. One player goes first, next one, and so on. I kind of look 
sideways at my two peers looking for some kind of affirmation if I should go ahead or not. And they stare at me all stone cold like <laughs> uh I turn yeah, around and I'm, I don't uh I don't give you any kind of indication one way or another. I'm gonna try to aura perception this Toridor who's smooth as silk, see what he's really feeling inside. If that's okay. All right, uh, give me a roll. Well, that, that's a what's uh, the um eight. I just got one success, so I just know you're a vampire, which really doesn't help me at all with anything. Yeah. Uh, well, we have information. Actually, matter of fact, before I continue, have you heard recently in Elysium about the concern about the the breach of uh this thing of ours? Yes. I was the one to find that information. You? Yes, me. Why are you surprised? I find that. No, not at all. It's just, well, I I find that solo efforts in this uh, great city of ours tend to be of smaller matters, where something this oh, no. large seems to be almost guaranteed to be work of a group. Oh, yeah, no, this was with the moral support of, of my group. But I, I happened to find it at one point when we were investigating something. Of course, with the help of my arcane abilities, which is almost also like having an army of support. But I was the one who found that. And I found it If in he's looking like over, if he's looking over like Hirsch's shoulder, he'll see like Augie in the background just like rolling his eyes. He definitely knows <laughs> that. We are able to find out that uh, we believe that they may be from Ireland, the people that are responsible. Really? So dear old son yes, wasn't really. just letting his prejudices run away with him. Was it excuse me? So dear old Simon, Simon wasn't, wasn't just letting his pre- prejudices run his mind again. Oh no, and that's why we need Simon. We need Simon's assistance. Just for I don't know, I'd say about a half hour. Hmm. So what kind of assistance per se? Because I I've I will have to say that if there is any uh vigorous activity needed then i'm i must i must protest that i don't know some money some uh was, recompense must be made my way for the uh use of my uh good friend here oh it is not vigorous as a matter of fact i can just do it a few steps away if you just give me a half hour of his time okay very well all right and i i, I walk up to lord <laughs> tell him in a whisper in his ear keep him occupied please and, I, and as I walk off and I motion to Mr. Rogers to kind of like follow me to go speak to Simon. You follow- I suppose I'll play along. Yeah. I mean, I don't see any reason why not. But, uh, do you get what I'm trying to say there, Lord Pelham? Yeah, he'll he'll give you a look. Yeah. Look, I don't want this guy trying to intervene between, you know what I mean, to, to interrupt Simon and I or try to get in on what we're talking about, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, I'm heading over to Simon uh, with Mr. Rogers. Hello folks, have you ever wished you could have an easy way to find gameplay videos and podcasts, or just media in general that deals with your favorite white wolf role-playing games? Or have you ever wished you could find a forum to share gameplay that you have recorded, one which wouldn't be drowned out by random posts and discussion so that your media could get the attention you want? Well. We have the answer for you in a Facebook group we run called Weight Wolf RPGs Gameplay and Media. The group is specifically ran with the sole intent of it being a one-stop shop for people to view or share media involving the games we all love. We take thorough steps to ensure the page does not become cluttered and is easy to traverse. We are currently over 1,000 members strong and we are continuing to rapidly grow with new media being shared every day. Stop on by. We hope to see you there. High Level Games, the industry's first choice in taking your games to the next level. We are a podcast blog and new media network at highlevelgames.ca. We have blog posts about all of your favorite games going up five days a week and a podcasting network with actual plays and shows that discuss role-playing games with more rolling out all the time. We are on iTunes, Twitch, and YouTube. Find out more information at highlevelgames.ca, a site that certainly isn't controlled by a shadowy board of directors of otherworldly origin. That's highlevelgames.ca. 
please. Help. They're coming. <laughs>